aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Time for responsible change. Hey, and we're going to talk a little bit about hopefully some bright spots that we can hope for in 2023, if there are any. I know that the uh, political leaders have made that a challenge for us, but I think we have a panel that is well up to the task. We have Tina Patterson, who's actually coming to us from Calcutta, India today, if I understand correctly. <laughs> Mediator, arbitrator, business consultant, and master of many trades. <laughs> Retired Judge Sandra Sims, author, working on her second book. <laughs> We're still waiting for the novels to start coming out. Move over, John Grisham. <laughs> and Ben Davis, Professor Emeritus from the University of Toledo School of Law, visiting professor at Washington Lee School of Law, and still on the move. Who knows what may be next? So welcome aboard. <clears throat> We've lost some incredible music legends in the last couple of weeks. One of my personal favorites, Jeff Beck, just an amazing, amazing, amazing guitar musician who moved it from the Yardbirds and Rock over into the symphonic. <clears throat> David Crosby, a solo artist, as well as one of the founders of the Birds and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. <clears throat> but we're going to reach back to kind of a theme from another long ago musical artist, Dusty Springfield, <clears throat> who's Big hit was called Wishing and Hoping. Sandra, you want to start us off? What are you wishing and hoping for for 2023? Well, what am I wishing and hoping? Uh, that we do better. <laughs> that we do do better as a as a society, do better as a world. We've got a lot of issues to address uh, on so many levels and and while there is sometimes that tendency to kind of think, oh, it looks so bad, but actually I think we're we're kind of heading in the right direction on some in some areas. I'm a little concerned I'm not a little bit very concerned about the gun violence that seems to have kicked off the year and that I don't know I'm 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 not, I'm not sure how, what to say about that other than how tragic it is and what is uh, I'm not sure how to how to how to characterize that. On the other hand, I think politically we're actually gonna come out okay at the end of the issue. Sanity is going to prevail. Yeah, I mean it's gonna emerge and prevail. It has to emerge first, but it, it does. And we know where it's not emerging. <laughs> it's gonna emerge first and then prevail. I don't know. <laughs> <It's kind Right>. of... <laughs> okay. Tina, some thoughts, wishes, and hopes for 2023? Wow, Chuck. That's a, that's a, the timing of this question is most auspicious. Um, we just started the Lunar New Year, so gong shi fa san, um, year of the rabbit, also intended to be a lucky year for most. What, what am I wishing and hoping for? What I'm hoping for is that people's request to be treated with dignity um, and respect will resonate to our, our leaders, um, whether that's federal, state, local, or public servants. We, we are seeing time and time again that people are not responding in a very positive way when they feel that they haven't been heard and that their wishes or desires or needs are not addressed. Um, Thinking about 2024, I'm hoping that this year will give us opportunity to find solid political candidates for the 2024 election cycle. Um, I'm also hoping and wishing that our, our leaders, whether that's local leaders or, or leaders at higher levels, think about the legacy that they're leaving behind for our young people and consider how they want to shape that narrative right now literally looks like a dust storm and it's not it's it's not the dust storm of Dorothy coming back to Kansas it's, it's the dust storm of us just going staying in a cyclone cyclone of, of I'd say conflict and 
we can't stay here. It, it's not working well. It's, it's not working well. It's literally um, destroying us, the very fabric of who we are and putting the, the basic needs of people in challenge. So I'll, I'll rest there for now on, on my wishing and hoping. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that what plant, the seeds that we plant mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. will result in some beautiful um, flowers and not the weeds that I've been seeing lately. From your mouth. Uh, Brother Ben, what's on your mind? Well, you know, with the passing of David Crosby, you know, Crosby, Santos, Neil Young, and uh, Nash and Young has no longer lo lost one of its main members. I remember when Santos used to sing those wonderful solos as part of them back in the day. Uh, this was a joke. I don't know if anybody caught it, but it was a joke about this guy <laughs> in Congress, this guy named Santos, who they've been a million memes put about him right now. Oh, you know, so it's Crosby, Santos, Nash, Crosby, and Young. Crosby, Santos, and Nash, and Young. And Young. Okay, okay, so with the loss of Crosby, that was an effort. Okay. So put a little humor in it. We, we got it. We got it. Okay. okay. Took a minute, but, but I got it. <laughs> all right. Okay. So it's low, low level humor. I'm sorry, folks. But, uh, um, I, you know, I, I, I always, I, I always work in, uh, you know, hope for the best, but I always sort of plan for the worst, you know, that way if something good happens, I can live with that, you know, and uh, uh, the way, uh, you know, it's an interesting that you started with David Crosby because I went to the uh, 30th uh, concert at Woodstock in 1999. And there were two concerts. There was the Woodstock ripoff concert, if I can call it that, which was at some particular uh, place. I can't, I can't, it was a real disaster. It's actually a movie about it. And then yeah. there was a thing called A Day in the Garden, which was actually organized at the location at Woodstock. Yeah. And I, I went to that, and there was Richie Havens, and there was... Oh. Um, uh, Arlo Guthrie and Arlo Guthrie's kids. There was David Crosby and his love child kid, who he sort of had come back to. There was Melanie and her kid, right? You know, and so it was like 30 years later, what would you expect would happen? And it's like, well, those kids of those cool people were cool kids too, you know, and they were doing interesting music, right? Okay. And one of the things that really got me is that David Crosby, is, I guess it was the last song or something, he sang Ohio, O-H-I-O, Ohio, you know, about the... Poor the, Dead uh, in Ohio, right. Yeah, Poor Dead in Ohio, right? And it resonated those incredibly, 30 years later, it resonated. Wow. And the last thing he said uh, as he went off stage was, that's why I came here, you know? as he's going on stage was to sing that song and and then bring that energy. And so when I'm doing sort of planning for the worst vision for this year, I'm looking at, you know, that's why we came here now, to do, to, to do, to act, to try to do what we can to make that hopeful reality occur, even notwithstanding all the different backlashes and things like that. And uh, I don't know, just the feeling that I got uh, recently was like that's what I need to be doing is like you know just like the the guitar riff of Ohio it just starts this thing going that you know to try to do in the modest things that we can do in our places and notwithstanding you know substantial forces that are out there that are retrograde you know I mean that yeah so what is the line that somebody said when did black people say we were going to give up you know uh, so we, you know, we just keep keep moving forward on trying to move things in the way that they should yeah. be, and yeah. just trying to find places where we can help on those things. Um, you know, uh, I just saw a thing that happened uh, in Memphis, I guess, where this guy, there are five police officers who beat up this black kid. Yeah, this black guy, twenty nine, he killed him. They're all black. You know, there's a problem with that, man. There's a problem that that's not what we were about back in the 60s when we talked about integration, that you would integrate in a way that you would be oppressive to people, right? Uh -huh. So 
It was that you integrate in a way to be something better. And so it's like, okay, we've got to find a way to be better. We got the Asian American community out on the West Coast going through all that stuff about all those killings. It's like, that's not the way no anyone in that community wants it to be. We gotta find a way to to make that kind of thing not happen, you know. And I don't know what the answers are, but what I'm just trying to say is the activism is the thing that really uh-huh. I think of this year um, uh, as being the most um, uh, a particularly important thing, so that that you know, hopeful act activism I think of uh, is going to you know that's the way I kind of think of it. I can plan for the worst, but that doesn't mean I have to sit around. Uh, my congressman here, Bob, was uh-huh. one of those five who were blocking the appointment of McCarthy. Right? He, I mean, yeah. this dude was. I mean, really right there, you know, and I'm like, wow, look at this. This, this is what I got here. Okay, well, we got we got to deal with him, you know, and because not to say that the other 100 or so were going to be great, but it was just interesting to have your congressman being one of those guys considered out in the, the wing of the wing of the uh, Republican Party, right? You know, it was like, wow, I, don't, I look at the people around me here in Charlottesville, they're not that kind of people. You know, I mean, the the people I know, all kinds, they're not that out there. You know, there's a space there that's that got to be, you know, made manifest, I guess. Got to be occupied. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're getting it. We're in a way, though, you know, with the I don't want to not that, you know, Congress means everything to everybody. It's sometimes it's just tiring to kind of listen to what goes on there because it feels like it's just going nowhere while the rest of us are trying to get life done here but uh, um it's you know with seeing that that um so-called republican majority is so very very slim and so fragile and so like unlikely to really get much accomplished is almost like a positive thing because it's gonna push the needle on some things that will need to get done that you they don't have won't have the luxury of being able to stall everything i guess that sometimes i think about that that may be hopeful um but i don't know i don't think ben i just i yeah i i i think that in our while we we fixate on 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 washington while we fixate on you know those issues things are taking place in in our communities that folks are still like you say, still pushing, still working to get things done. That's still taking place um, everywhere. We just, our legislature just went into session this, this term and the last couple of days, and I'm working on this women's prison project. And we yesterday was the state of the judiciary. And we now have a woman's court. Uh, mm. Went into session, what was it, yesterday, or day before yesterday? It's first session, recognizing that many of women, many women defendants, and this is not all, but, you know, that a key issue with many women defendants who are criminal defendants are usually the victims of some sort of abuse or trauma themselves. Mm -hmm. And women who are incarcerated generally, I mean, there's some exceptions, um, but are generally going to have have been abused or traumatized themselves. Many of them are parents themselves. And so this notion that you must continue to incarcerate them is bodes well bodes poorly for the rest of society as well so just seeing that kind of effort take place that's just saying okay we recognize that this is an issue that we can address by looking at this population that's in our criminal justice system and let's say wait a minute they don't necessarily have to be there there's some underlying issues that we as a society can address and mm-hmm. we should. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that is like, yes, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel that. That's like, that's true. That is, yeah. you know, I know, Ben, when you're when you're teaching, you're probably getting the same. When I was, you know, doing a class at the, in criminal justice at Shamanan, I often said, you know, we have all these great books about what the theories of why people commit crime and all of that. We spend a lot of time studying that. But there's just a couple things. It's. <laughs> It's race, trauma, and mm-hmm. you know that's kind of where that's where it comes from. When you're gonna have, you know, 
criminal conduct, it's you can always kind of pull it back to those issues. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's you know just just that re- the the uh, you know you've made so judge you you made me so feel so good from just telling me about that woman's court by this oh. idea of a recognition a recognition of something and trying to make something that speaks to that to a recognition that is not just sort of you know ignoring it's like yeah. we see yeah, something just... and we're going to try to do something about it and you know it may work it may not but the point is is it, it's like trying to do something i think there's a lot try. of that I think there's a lot try. of that in this country. I, I've been reading things about people, even, you know, so-called Republicans, like, hey, can we just leave here, please, instead of all the cinema? Can we actually do the, you know, the job of public administration that needs to be done? That kind of stuff, without all the game playing on all the stuff, you know, that we've been living with for a long time. You know, all I like to call it the Elon Musk crazy. You know, I mean, it's like, we don't need the crazy. We don't need the Elon Musk. We just need the kind of make it work kind of thing. And I make just make it work for everybody, you know? And- well, I'm glad I made you, I was able to make you feel, but our uh, Chief Justice here, um, Chief Justice Rector Ma, he's, he's amazing. I, I you guys should, you know, kind of Google him and look up some stuff he's doing. He's, 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 he's uh, quite innovative in so many areas. Uh, I am, I know, you know, Chuck knows as well. We're, very, very impressed with the stuff that the things that you know he's putting forth. And he was, you know, and I don't mean to make it's it's not all politics, but he was you know appointed when we had a Republican governor. Yeah. Chief yeah. Justice. Yeah. And she's the one leading the push on getting the women's court. She's retired now, but she's pushing for the women. She said, because this is she's got time to do this now. That was important to her then. And now it's it's what we can work on. Yeah. It's just well, so I I it's just a that's a at least that's, I, I feel good about that. Yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. It's wonderful. It, just the sensitivity, what? you know. It reminds me of like these veteran courts when they, a lot of veterans are getting in trouble. It turns out, well, you know, it turns out there's like a community that has a certain set of issues that maybe needs to be addressed in a little different way. In a that, different way, exactly. You know, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that 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 was that was uplifting, you know, to hear him and to well, I've I've seen him work, so I know what that's you know felt good. So there's things, this that's 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 a hopeful thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, and you folks are bringing out some themes that really need to be front and center. Again, Mm -hmm. they haven't been for a few years, but they need to be. And that's that people of conscience and character are are not only speaking up and standing up, they're listening, they're paying attention. And they're paying attention to people who have endured undeserved trauma. And they're looking at their situations with respect and understanding to whether they're homeless, whether they're women, Mm -hmm their domestic violence or sex trafficking victims or whatever it is they may have been subjected to, a lack of health care or inappropriate health care, uh, abusive employment treatment. We're beginning to recognize that these patterns are the ones that are at a causative heart of behaviors that we can no longer afford to ignore or tolerate. Exactly. Yeah. And we have to disconnect these people by respect and understanding from the violence, from the guns, from the revenge, from the vindictiveness. that unfortunately too many people in leadership still embody and exemplify by their behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. We need to shift okay. that. Control of the narrative needs to come back to the people. The people that's of it. conscience and character. That's it. That's absolutely it. Um, like I said, we just, I, oh, Tia, you were getting ready to say something on that point. I, I'll be really quick. Uh, I, I'm Chuck, I'm glad you mentioned talking about 
Trafficking January is um, Human Trafficking Awareness Month, and it, it does it just that's one thing that I'm really happy to see is that there's more collaboration among agencies, the grassroots agencies, as well as the law enforcement, as well as those age, those organizations that are doing monitoring and tracking. And they're saying, look, this is a global issue, and it's not just child trafficking. It's sex workers. It's migrant farmers that are being put into spaces that are, in, un, under any circumstances, are not livable. Mm -hmm. And what, what, we, what do we do about that? If you see something, say something. And here mm -hmm. are some resources. It's just heartwarming. I know when this, and Sandra, you can relate to this. Not more than 20 years ago, this was something that you couldn't get people to talk about. You know, right. magic, human trafficking is not happening in my country, or right. it's in that other space. And to, just to see this collaborative effort, I think, is one of those, those moments where you go, it's finally happening. Is yes. it perfect? No, but it's yeah. a it's a start, and it's better than it has been in the past. I and and, and people are listening. You're listening yes. and taking action. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I was that made me think, Tina, of an idea, which was uh, that you know we're we're seeing a lot of predatory behaviors being revealed. Okay, that behaviors that we had sort of gotten accustomed to or somehow and then you know, maybe that's one of the things that came out of the uh the pandemic you know was like watching i mean i've heard that people for example with regards to their work are disinvesting as compared yes. to what they used to do because they realize something's going wrong here that this is not giving me the satisfaction that it's supposed to there's something going on that's not right, you know, and the kind of things that you're talking about with regards to there's something going on here that's not right with regards to this human trafficking, this person here, this person on the street, you know, you know, and what we can do about what being willing to do. And I mean, actually, I think the state and local and federal government get involved, too. They have the resources, you know, yeah. that they could put to it if they wanted to. Um, you know, I think that there's people recognizing there's a lot of predatory stuff goes on. There's a lot of predators uh, in, a, in, in a broad definition of predators taking advantage of people that um, it's, you know, for whatever weird reasons they're built that way. Uh, but that does not mean that that has to be the way we have to be uh, in this, at least in, in this society, I think. Yeah. And in this world, too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Tina, I'm glad you brought up the, the, the trafficking, too. I was at a um, one of our uh, Seraptist meetings on Tuesday, and we had a representative from um, the Missing Children's Program here. In, and, she's, and she was actually trafficked some years back, mm -hmm. uh, kidnapped and trafficked. And, you know, she she's, was like a normal person. She went out date on a date because she'd been divorced and got to know this guy. Next thing you know, it's like, okay, pulls her into a, well, I don't need to go into her whole life thing, but the point of it is that what she's now, she can't, once she got out, um, she kind of dedicated her whole life. She's been doing this now for 12 years mm -hmm. to address the issue of, of trafficking and educating and educating and informing people. And that's, and she shared some things. When you talk about the international aspects of it, she said they work with, she says they work with from the police department to Interpol. That's the range of mm -hmm. of enforcement that her office is engaged with and trying to find children and and addressing this issue. That was and I hadn't even thought about you mentioned that, Tina, about the worldwide effect of it. And that's I hadn't thought about that. You know, you see what's happening in your community, but you realize those connections are are international. And that's who she was that's who she's worked with. And yeah. it's they're making a lot of pro they're making i mean it's like you said it's still a lot to be done but there's at least there's a recognition 20 years ago we would have just thought nah it's not happening well, 20 years ago there was no interface between the u.s and other agencies the u.s did not recognize some of the protocols that were in place where mm -hmm. interpol was working with foreign countries and saying oh you know we see this pattern and the u.s said Guys, no, not here. On your own. we've got this going on over here. 
um, you know, the, the whole topic of human trafficking started because of a report written in 1999 by a CIA analyst, and it was focused primarily on three cities. And what really made the turn was there was some trafficking occurring in Atlanta, and a law enforcement officer said, I don't know what to do about the traffickers. And he ended up using RICO laws to, mm -hmm. to begin yeah, the process. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. you're seeing just at the federal level, you're seeing at the state level. And I know when I was in Texas, we worked to put legislation in place where the traffickers' assets are frozen and, yes. allowed, and they are not allowed to move because they're, they're in jail. But there's also wraparound services for the survivors of traffickers. And yes. it's, it's, again, that was a, key a huge thing. Yes. jump. That it's made a huge jump. difference in, 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 in people's willingness to come forward and to, because they were so frightened. She talked about that. They're just so frightened. You, I mean, you, you don't know, you know, that this person's going to hurt your family. They're going to hurt their children. They're going to, you know, you, it, the fear was so, was so mm. powerful that they would not, could not move. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And the U.S. at that time had a policy of repatriation. And then there were both NGOs and local groups said, you've got to do something different. So now there's visas in place. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. also, depending on what, what the background is, you can use the Violence Against Women Act, some of the measures there to support survivors. So, it, it, you know, again, one of the things to, to wish and hope for is that this conversation regarding trafficking and the impact both globally and locally is something that we look at. Um, you know, there's states like California, I know Texas, migrant farmers are involved in, yes. in supporting the economy. But where it becomes inhumane is when that person believes that they're going to be paid for their services and never receive that and funding not. or they're held essentially they in bondage. It. Yeah. And they yeah. don't get it. That's that's the other side of it. Yeah. 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 And there's there's you know, just think about the way the the people in the uh, in the meatpacking industry were treated during the COVID. Yes. Thing, you know, yeah, absolutely. And one of the ironies was that you know he said they're the line workers, but there was actually the managers were being treated just as bad. You know, it's like you're, you're being you're all being played. Everybody gets the idea. Everybody I'm, got I'm played. I'm being played. I'm being yes. played too. You know, yeah. Yes. Everybody got played just for the yeah. sake of a chicken wing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Not a chicken wing, Sandra. I'm sorry. You pick something with just a little bit more substance to it, but I'll, I'll go with the chicken wing. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I don't mean to be, but it's that's what we're talking about, you know. It's just, yeah. Well, but those are uh, hopeful things. These are all hopeful things that are occurring in this time. This recognition. And children of, are interested in learning more about civics which ties back into knowing which body of the government does what. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of, this is, again, the hope, I'm hoping that the adults will, will get on the same train as well. Um, and try I, to learn. <laughs> and, and try to learn. And so, you know, you know uh, learn something do. before you, you, you comment on social media, kind of read the story first before you make your comments. Yeah. Or spread other things. Yeah. yeah, accurate headlines are, are a wonderful thing. Yeah, indeed. Then, you know, it's like uh, is it what Stephen King saying? If a book is banned at your school, run to the library and get it so you can read it because it must be good. You know, I mean, it's like the flip of the whole sort of let's close down and close the minds. Like, well, let's keep opening mm -hmm. the minds. You know, you always hope for things. Uh, I, yeah. I I was happy to hear that there's like some pushback in Florida on the AP yes, African American yes, Studies thing. So yes, no, no, absolutely. You know, you absolutely. Can't dog, you know, I was like, are you gonna really do that dog uh, that dog whistle one more time, folks? I mean, I mean I know I think white people are tired of this. You know, I said, please man, stop pulling my chain. Where you where you, you know, I mean we all see Yeah, I'm, I, I was happy to see that I I was kind of concerned. It's like we're not getting any pushback on this. Like it's yeah. gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> Like they say on ESPN, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> and we're out of time for today. Oh, so I wanted to. Okay. Say, and we could go on for hours and hours or days and days. But yeah. I wanted to thank you all for doing exactly what Joni Mitchell in the original Woodstock song brought home to us. And David Crosby reminded us 
we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. It's yeah. a collective garden. It's a collaborative garden in communication and in action. And it's our garden for all. Yeah. Of us. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you for bringing us back there. And thanks to those in the entertainment industry for reminding us yes, it is where do. we belong. And they do. Good. Continue Good your point. mission, Tina. This was great. Uh, likewise, both of you. Great Same to have chat. you back together. Take care. Happy Lunar New Year of the rabbit or the cat or whatever. The rabbit. Your animal is not in Vietnam. But. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. In my house, I okay. got four cats, so it's four cats here, definitely. There you go. <laughs> Take care. Aloha. All right. Aloha. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Hey, everybody. Much love. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.